This month, we're all about starting off the year strong. And one of the strongest people that I know is my dear friend and co-host, Lauren. And so I am very excited to be able to interview her today about how she is being strong, not only for herself, but also for her new friend, Libby. Lauren, <laughs> you have Meet a Libby. cute little new, new, I'm not a human, but a little person right well, there. Well, you know, I decided today was bring your daughter to work day. <laughs> <laughs> and she is now mine. And she looks very happy to be yours as well. She, you know what, she is. And two weeks ago, tomorrow, I found Libby and we left the shelter together. It was not part of a grand plan. Mm -hmm. I, d I was preparing myself to get a dog, mm -hmm. but I really wanted a dog that could travel with me and mm -hmm. one that I wouldn't have to feel badly about. I haven't, mm -hmm. I've been a responsible adult not having a dog with mm -hmm. my crazy lifestyle. I fly over 100,000 miles a year. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot. And if, I think if I had to find all the doggy potties in the airports around the world, that would make it even more challenging. Yes, it would. <laughs> but the truth is, um, I put in an application for another dog that looked like he would be that perfect dog. I was rejected because I didn't have a yard and mm -hmm. potentially other dogs for him to play with. And I challenged myself to go to a shelter, which I've never been able to do, mm -hmm. because I knew I, could, I would just cry my way through. I would never make it, and I'd mm -hmm. want to take them all home with me. Right. And I went to the shelter um, on a Friday, and I saw Libby in the visitor area with a woman and when the woman came out, I asked if she was taking the dog. And she said, let me tell you her story, that she was rescued on the 5 freeway on Friday night at rush hour by four cars that saw her fly out of a car window. Mm. And that she was just now available for viewing, that she had been rescued. Those four cars stopped. They got her off the freeway. They got her to emergency vet care. And she landed at the OC animal care shelter in mm. Tustin. And that's where I went just to visit and see. And she was out there, um, and I checked the website that night, and it said she was available. And the next morning I went back so I could visit with her. And this little dog just was sitting, sunning herself. She was super chill. Mm. And the handler was sharing with me that she was nipping and that, you know, she... He said, I know she's a great dog, but this is not a great place for her. Mm -hmm. She needs to heal. She's been through a lot of trauma, and she's not one of those dogs who is going to live well in the shelter. Mm -hmm. And I, she and I just had a little conversation. Mm -hmm. They gave me a pink blanket and a leash, and she got in the car. And he said, don't, don't try to touch her. She's very sensitive to touch. And half an hour later, from the back of the car, I felt a snout coming under my arm. Aww. I was leaning on the console, and I could feel her face coming in under my Aww. arm. And I knew that we were just it. She was my girl. I was her human. Aww. And we would figure it out. And it's been now two weeks. Uh -huh. Every day, she shows me something new of mm -hmm. herself. You know, and as her, her spay incision has healed, we shaved her when I got her. She had a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. um, we'll show some pictures of the befores and afters. Mm -hmm. And just the next day, I had to find a Sunday groomer mm -hmm. who would take her because she was so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if we could get rid of that, it would be helpful. And of course, she was very upset at first. Of you course. can see the look on her face. She says, who are you and where's my hair? <laughs> But now that I can bathe her and, you know, we can use soothing oils and the antibiotics have cleaned up her skin condition and, you know, and slowly, slowly she loves her food, she loves her mm -hmm. tennis ball, she loves Wonderful. her pull-me toys, and she's showing me every day that she knows how to play. Mm -hmm. She's great with kids, she's great with dogs, and... Um, and she's the kind of dog who would never have made it out of the shelter because of the language they were using to mm -hmm. describe her behavior mm -hmm. without consideration that she was in pain, in trauma, terrorized. And I'm so grateful that we found each other because she is turning into 
just, I mean, check her out. Yeah, right? no. <laughs> just well, the sweetest little girl. She's the sweetest. Like, she came right up to me today, and she just, like, was just checking me out. Like, to me, she showed, like, no signs of trauma. No. Just, which is such a tribute to you and a tribute to her for her resilience. They are so resilient. It's amazing. Even in the first days. You could see in her eyes she was just trying so hard. She, she would show me that, you know, it'll get better. I mm -hmm. promise I'll be better. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't have to be better. Just get better, right? Mm -hmm. Feel better. Feel better. And she just, she needs to gain about six pounds. She's mm -hmm. obviously been underfed for a while. Mm -hmm. And now that her hair is growing in and her body is healing, mm -hmm. um, she's playful. She has friends in the neighborhood, That's right? So we have play fun. dates now. Oh. I'm meeting a whole new group of my neighbors who are out walking all day long. That is so <laughs> fabulous. So, so what just as kind of a, to bring this back full circle into, um, you know, gaining, being strong, starting off strong, what do you feel like um, rescuing Libby has done for you? It has definitely tested me. Mm -hmm. It's a big change. I wasn't, it wasn't part of a plan, right? Mm -hmm. I walked in testing mm -hmm. myself to leave the shelter with no dog, and of course I left the shelter with a dog. I didn't have a bed, I didn't have food, I didn't have anything. Yeah. So this dog, basically I left her in the back of the car and I had to go shopping and mm -hmm. <laughs> buy a few things. Um, but I've had dogs, I had dogs all my life growing up, yeah. and, and my family's always had dogs. So I feel like we're a little family now, mm -hmm. right? And it's nice to be responsible to something outside yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got five children and a dog, mm -hmm. so you've got plenty to be responsible to. But for me, at some point, I felt like it was time to actually have another being in yeah. my sphere. Mm -hmm. So whether she does ultimately, uh, whether I train her to be officially a service dog of any mm -hmm. kind so she can travel with me legitimately, I really believe that she's got great potential. I think mm -hmm. she'd be an amazing healing dog for kids mm -hmm. in hospitals or orphanages. I think there's more to her and every day we discover more. And I love that. I love um, just like I love being with people, mm -hmm. like we've shared, this whole show has been about, you know, starting the year strong. What are you doing? Your, what's your next thing? What do you aspire mm -hmm. to? I can aspire for Libby, and Libby can aspire for Libby. That's right. And my, every time I leave her in the car, because she'd rather come with me of than course. not, I leave her in the car, and I say, you're just going to be the best Libby you can be, and I'll be right back. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and she does. She curls up and goes to sleep and waits for me to come back. It's, it's going to be an evolving relationship mm -hmm. like any, but I have to say that having gone to the shelter, that day I went to three shelters, mm. and I really learned a lot about shelter life mm -hmm. and a lot about adoption and how hard those people work mm -hmm. to find homes, find good, loving mm -hmm. homes for these dogs and, and cats and rabbits and mm -hmm. a chicken and a pot belly pig. Yes. I mean, there's, there's no end to what ends up at a shelter. And at one time, just like Libby at one time, was very much loved. Mm -hmm. And then there was a period where she wasn't. Mm -hmm. And they know that. They know that they've fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. And then they know when they've been brought back into a loving space. Mm -hmm. And I think their, um, the return on your investment not the cash investment, the return on your investment of heart and soul. Mm -hmm. And Libby, her name, Libby, comes from Hebrew, which means my heart. Mm -hmm. Because when I saw her and heard her story, my heart just broke. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how much I hurt that day. Mm -hmm. And that was what made me run back the next day to go get her. Because mm -hmm. I kept hearing this dog's name is Libby. Mm -hmm. Go get her. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is, we've come this far in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And she's been to Thanksgiving with a room of strangers and a baby. Oh, <laughs> and every test I throw in front of her, she's just Rises excelling. to the occasion. She does. Well, I feel like that she is a great um, mascot for the theme of the show, rising to is. the occasion. Indeed. And, you know, it's been fun to learn so much from all of our guests, starting off the year strong. I mean, 
we've we've got people who are changing the world, changing the way that we think about energy. Yeah, we're changing the way we think about. Um, relationships in business and mm -hmm. in life. How we communicate. How we communicate, how we can change our bodies in the way that we want to be perceived and perceive ourselves. And our health and how we mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. So I think my wish for everyone, you, everyone we know and love, is that this should, this should be the best year ever so far. And Absolutely. we should start it strong, keep it strong, and be our very best selves all the way along. And what you said before, find our loving space where we can really grow and thrive. There we go. Yeah. And we wish that for you. And I wish that for you, my dear friend. Me too. And we look forward to a great year. And we'll see you next time. Good day, Orange County. <laughs>